Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Polly. Today I'll be showing you the Victoria Micro. This is running a 1202.5 11,500 kV RC in power motors. Um, I run it on 2S with 3 inch props or 2.5 inch props. I prefer 2.5 inch, but for the purpose of this comparison, I'll be running 3018 uh, Gemfan Hurricane props. And these are the ones that you'll see in the flight video. Uh, that I'll be showing you in a couple seconds here. I'm running a generic 25 milliwatt uh, camera and a VTX. The flight controller in here is the Darwin FPV 15 amp all-in-one uh, flight controller ESC and I'm running a FlySky receiver but I plan on switching to an Express LRS receiver and that's housed down here and uh, I also have a beeper at the back that I forgot to mention. So this guy runs on uh, 2S um, so I usually use uh, these GNB 550 batteries and I keep them wrapped in a rubber band in case this rubber band snaps then I can uh, replace it really easily. Uh, so these are 2S packs. Uh, these are quite old. A lot of people switch to the gumstick batteries now and uh, that's what I'll be switching to as well. Um, I, but instead of using a 2S gumstick cell I'm going to use 1S gumstick cells. Um, and then I'll use an adapter and hopefully that will work. I don't usually use these ones because these ones are very low capacity and they don't have a lot of uh, amp draw that uh, I don't, it, it, it might ruin these batteries, I think. Uh, so I don't use it for that. Um, but if you have the 530 ones, um, you can consider running those with this adapter. Uh, this is just a series adapter with two PH2 solid pins to an XT30. And right here I have it to a JST so you can just remove it and attach it here. Um, let me talk a bit about the frame and the build. So the frame and the build is basically the same as a, if you've uh, followed this channel before, it's the same as the Toronto Micro Marathoner, except I've made a couple changes. So here I have the naked frame. Um, this is printed on a 2.5 millimeter thickness, um, but if you're 3D printing it, I recommend 4 millimeter thickness, which is what this is, and 80% infill. Um, this one is for um, the carbon. Um, I recommend 2.5 carb, 2.5 millimeter carbon if you're planning to go carbon. Um, and I've designed this frame really for durability first. And so far it's been holding up pretty well. I'll show you a couple crashes later on as well, and um, I'll include it somewhere for you to know. But this is my first 3D printed frame, 80% infill again, and 40, uh, 4 millimeters thick. And I have not broken it yet. I've had many crashes. Not many, but a couple hard crashes, and it still works. No parts are even broken that I can uh, that I know of. Uh, there's a bit of a strain line over there, stress line, but it's fine. Um, and the reason why that is is because I took the, the research that I did and the observations that I had from the previous micro marathoner frame and I applied it to this one. So I've made the front a lot thicker and wider. I've made these arms thicker and wider and I've moved the intersecting point between these three points away from this hole because that hole is a point of uh, breakage uh, for my previous frame. And uh, I've thickened these ones as well, these pieces, I believe. And I also thickened this rear piece quite a bit because I had a lot of breakage there as well. These pieces are more just for rigidity for these outside arms and for the signature now V shape that I'm trying to push forward with. And uh, once this is in carbon, I have a feeling that these uh, struts here will add a lot of rigidity to these um, outer arm pieces because uh, 3D printing is quite flexible but carbon is not nearly as flexible. Um, I've also added these pieces over here and these are for hooking into the the rubber band. So before I used to use uh, what two rubber bands do a crisscross from here to here and here to here but I've moved it for to this um, orientation here and I don't really know how to describe it but I can show you how I um, usually wire the battery in so uh, I just take the battery and slide it through like this so the good thing about this way is that you can run three inch props and more often than not you actually will not hit the rubber band with the crisscross pattern I had many instances of where I was constantly hitting the rubber band and I also think this pattern looks a lot cleaner um, with just two stripes rather than multiple rubber bands going 
back and forth. And another thing is I also found that the rubber band stays within these gaps a little bit better than before. So uh, to be honest, I have not um, carbon cut it yet. Um, I may consider carbon cutting this one. Um, I'm not sure though. And I'm interested to see how the bits of the, the CNC machine are able to get through these uh, small spaces. I'm wondering if that's possible. If not, then I might have to do some small redesigns. Um, but I'll post the DXF files. Um, I believe that's the, the format used for carbon cutting. And um, I'll, yeah, I'll post it. And if you want to make any modifications to it, then it'll be easier. Hopefully, I mean, you can do that with the STL file too, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so regarding the electronics, um, 15 amp ESC is really what you're going to need, um, especially if you're running three inch on 2S. Um, for the specification of these motors, really you shouldn't, it doesn't even recommend using 2S for three, three inch props, but for my testing, it's actually not very warm at all. I've had motors get a lot warmer uh, while running these 3 inch props, so it's not warm. I think it performs fine, I haven't noticed any sort of damage. So if you really want to run 3 inch, you, I think you can do it. Um, but you should also watch out for the ESC. So this ESC is 15 amp continuous 17 amp burst, and I have a feeling um, if you're punching out, you're going to be using that burst on this ESC. And generally, uh, I don't really like uh, going into the burst territory. I prefer to stay within the continuous and just try to make the ESC last as long as possible because personally, I don't do a lot of racing um, and I don't really need a lot of throttle. It's mostly just for having fun. Uh, so I wouldn't go into the continuous. That's why I would recommend going back to the 65 millimeter because that's what's rated for the motors. And uh, that's also going to fit under the... the Sorry about that brief interruption. Uh, as I was saying, um, I would prefer to run 65 millimeter props because those are that, that is what is rated for these motors on 2S. And that is also what is rated for um, this flight controller and ESC combo. Um, that is um, under the continuous rating, so you should be doing all right. Um, I also forgot to get the weight for you. Um, let me just add in the weight right now. From my testing, it is under un, under a sorry about that under a hundred grams with the battery intact. So let me just add the battery in here. This is the 550. If you use two 530s, um, then uh, that may change. So let me just add in the adapter. So this is everything uh, ready to fly, and uh, it is 99.43 grams. So you're really really reaching there but that's right under the 100 gram mark. And it is a, a lot of fun and you get plenty of power. You'll see me punch out many, many times um, in the flight footage that you're probably seeing right now. And I'll have a commentary video of me narrating my own flight experience as I'm flying it separately, just as I did with the micro marathoner. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, let me talk a bit about the other electronics. So right here, I have a 25 millimeter, uh, 25 milliwatt video transmitter, but you can use another video transmitter. Um, I just use 25 milliwatts because it's cheaper, and I have the dipole attached to the arm here. Um, normally, I think you'd usually have it s sticking up, but uh, I just decided not to do it like that because I thought this was uh, stronger and it'll protect the antenna, and it'll make sure there are less, there are fewer loose wires flying around everywhere. Um, but that's up to you. Uh, you could try to use an AIO camera, but I'm not sure if there's enough room for it to stick out the top here, but you can always cut it in if you need. Um, I also have a couple modifications for this bottom piece. This is directly taken off the Toronto Mar Marathoner, um, and I just cut off the top to make it shorter. Um, but, um, you're going to want to, uh, the one that I'll be including is going to be filled in in the back, it's not going to have any holes, um, so that might change the weight a little bit. But the reason why I do that is just because uh, for durability, if there's wet grass, perhaps that will help protect against the elect uh, protect the electronics on the inside. And I also removed this piece over here, I believe, um, to make it entirely hollow um, at the top. This one is an old version, um, but I'll show you over here. It's entirely 
um, open in the middle here. And the reason why I did that is because it's a lot of work to get this flight controller out and solder in the, the pieces and everything. So if anything gets disconnected, you can actually just solder in through the top portion. Um, that exposes it a bit more, but I find it a lot more convenient. So that's up to your discretion. If you want to fill it in, you can always just tape it over or something like that. Um, and I also use a lot of um, uh, pH... These are not PH2 connectors. These are micro pico connectors, I think, or pico. I'm not sure what they're called, um, but they're tiny connectors, and I connected them to the VTX beeper and camera on this top module. So ideally, you would be doing very, very little soldering on the board after you've installed it. And I've also taped it down to these struts here. Um, so that would, that would be these two struts, and that just makes it so that everything is organized. And when you're in crashes, you can have uh, some security knowing that uh, your solder joints are probably going to stay fine, and your solder pads are hopefully going to stay intact as well. And uh, I haven't done that with this board because it's 3D printed, um, but later on I plan on, if I do carbon cutting, then I plan on also um, applying some electrical tape, uh, liquid electrical tape, to to try to make sure those solder pads um, stay intact as much as possible. So let me discuss where this quad fits into the market. Um, so uh, one of the first things I would say is that um, I designed these for 2S batteries because 2S batteries, uh, you can either buy them together like this, and a lot of people have them hanging around, or you can just easily attach two 1S batteries, and you can charge them on a like a charger that's like charges multiple like whoop batteries at the same time and that would be super easy and so I wanted to use 2S because it's a good balance of power and uh, affordability. Uh, 3S I think you're really pushing it. Um, you wouldn't usually chain up these batteries like this and for 3S with like an adapter like this um, and that means that you would have to buy a larger more expensive charger and the charger would have to only charge one battery at a time where um, with these packs you can charge maybe six of them at a time if you have one of those happy model chargers and that'll give you three flights per charge basically and that's one of the things that i like about it um, another thing is is that 2s well i said it's powerful um and it can also run three inch props because uh, I've seen people have uh, three inch toothpicks and for me I felt that there was too much sacrifice in terms of durability in order to make it light enough so that you can have fun with a 1S toothpick. Um, I would, I think I would look into that in the future to try to make my own 1S toothpick, um, especially with these motors. Um, but uh, for now, I think I'm more comfortable with 2S, and I think I will be able to get more power out of it. Um, the flight time is sev severely reduced compared to 1S toothpicks, though. That is uh, something to know. Um, another thing is that uh, I think this is more for freestyle. Um, but the strange, because, well, it's good for freestyle because um, if you have an HD camera in here... Um, I don't know how you'd wire it up. It, you'd have to wire it up through here and you'd have to secure the cables to make sure none of them get cut because those cables are quite exposed. But if you do get an HD camera in here, um, you can fly freestyle without the props in view. And um, that's not easy, especially for a lightweight frame. Usually freestyle frames um, without the props in view are like um, hybrid X, HX, and they have a like almost two stacking carbon plates on top, but this one doesn't need two stacking carbon plates, it's just one carbon plate, um, so it takes the form factor kind of of an X style frame, and it's so much easier to assemble in my opinion, uh, though I haven't actually personally assembled it, uh, another um, freestyle frame, but that's just my impression. And so yeah, you don't get any props in view, and I think that's really great. Um, but it's also um, an interesting idea for racing, because uh, from what I hear, plus frames were traditionally used for racing frames, and racing frames um, uh, need to be durable, and they need to be fast, and they need to be light, and I think this frame, um, main, it could be uh, an interesting um, practice vehicle for racing. Um, yeah, so because it is plus, it is, I would say, relatively lightweight and quite durable. So I think this has many different applications. Um, for me, what I will be using this frame for is I'm going to be switching back to 65 millimeter. I think I've been flying a lot of three inch. All the flight footage you see is with three inch props. Um, 
and I'm I'm gonna try to switch back to 65 millimeter because I want to make this ESC last as long as possible um, but I'm interested to see if I'll be disappointed by the flight performance once I switch back <laughs> um, and uh, also so my application for this will probably be freestyle flying and uh, I want to try out some 3D flying I think this would be an interesting quad to do 3D in um, one thing about 3D that I should mention is that um, usually you would have a fully horizontal camera for uh, 3D flying and with this frame uh, if you do fully horizontal you m may see the bottom of this uh, frame and that may bother you or it might not so uh, take that in consideration um, but that's something I'll be trying so mostly freestyle flying um, oh and uh, one more thing before I go I also made an updated canopy this one will work with the Toronto Micro Marathoner if you want I found the previous canopy way uh, it was usually the first thing to break um, and it just got frustrating to constantly fix and fix so I've changed it so that it uses three screws instead of two pegs and a motor screw so I've moved the motor screw from the this motor screw to the one in the back um, and I've made it thicker and I found that it's a lot more rigid and it survives a lot more crashes. In fact, this is the only canopy I've used and it still works. Uh, it looks like there's a bit of cracking there actually. But it's still quite sturdy. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of cracking I think there. But it's still quite sturdy. Um, apologies for that, that was my phone. Um, I also uh, moved the, cam the camera screw or, or the motor screw one screw back and that means that you'll have to install the screw first, the canopy first, and then you can install the camera. Um, and that is a bit frustrating but I think it, it, it does work. And that also means that depending on your camera you may not be able to lower your camera angle after a certain point. So you just have to watch out for that. If those, um, uh, if those requirements are not... Um, possible for your for your build um, you can always switch back to the old canopy uh, the old canopy will be the canopy in the micro marathon or you can download that and the new one will be the one under the new thing averse page uh, the Victoria micro and uh, yeah that's it oh actually uh, one more thing um, these pieces uh, sometimes depending on the camera you use as well uh, the front sharp parts of this canopy may get in the view of your camera so here it did um, in some angles so I just snipped the ends off and uh, that's it. So I think that's all I really have to say about the, the Victoria Micro. Um, my closing remarks will go uh, saying that uh, I'm, I'm actually a lot more uh, impressed with the flight performance, the fun factor, and um, just everything about this quad. Uh, more than the Toronto Marathoner and a lot of this is probably the most fun I've had in a quad in a really long time. Um, with this guy, uh, I would say that um, the flight um, flight uh, duration, the flight uh, battery life is not very good. It's about two minutes or three minutes, depending on how you fly. Um, but the, I think those are like those three, two minutes are really worth your while. Um, the tune uh, on three inch is uh, quite solid in my opinion. Uh, I felt like it did what I wanted to do and there were not very many instances where I could get oscillations out of it. And so um, I think if you're uh, looking for a good tune, a good quad to fly uh, with no problems and really durable, I would say. Um, you build it once and you don't have to go fix it. Uh, I would say you should maybe consider this frame. Um, if you want any additional tips, I won't be uploading a Designing Poorly series for this guy because I'm already going to do it for the Toronto Marathoner. Um, but if you're interested in um, how I built this, then you can uh, look at the Toronto Marathoner frame um, or you can request an additional build video in the comments and I will consider it depending on how many views this will get. Um, I honestly don't think this will be as popular because it's not as radical as slapping an 181650 battery and it's not following that trend of the 181650 batteries as much so I don't think this will perform nearly as well but uh, we'll see. This is definitely more fun and more suited for an FPV experience even a um, beginner FPV experience where you have to crash a lot maybe not the build for the beginners but definitely for the flight I think it's quite excellent and a whole lot of fun. 
Uh, anyways, I uh, hope to see you guys all soon. I have a lot of projects lined up. Um, I'm, I won't do the final build for the Toronto Marathon. The one you get there is the one you'll keep because I, I decided I don't think it's worth spending more time in it. I don't think the flight performance is adequate. I couldn't get a good team on it. So, well then again, I'm not very good at tuning. But uh, I think this is, will be the future of the Toronto Marathon, the Victoria Micro. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy, if you build this, let me know. I hope you enjoy it. And, um, I, yeah, I hope it goes well for you. Have a nice day.